All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, so another Workday Wednesday where we're going to start uh, breaking down this Smith & Wesson Model 36 uh, in order to do some work on it. Uh, one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull these grips off. So it just has a single screw right here. It runs all the way through. two grips as you can see and so yeah this gun hasn't been cleaned or anything in quite some time so uh, it's gonna get a thorough cleaning while we're at it on to the next part Okay, so for the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and pull out the cylinder. Uh, to do that, we're going to remove this screw that is located right here on the other side of the gun. And I can tell that my uh, father-in-law had not cleaned this gun in quite some time. So now with that screw out, the cylinder and everything pops out. And it's just simply because of that little screw right there fits into that spot and that's what prevents it from coming out. And then we can disassemble the cylinder and take a look here. See that it's got a little tiny bit of oil in there, but not very much. It seems like it's pretty dry and it's very dirty. So, definitely a gun that needs to be uh, cleaned up and uh, taken care of. So, then we'll go ahead. Next step, we'll remove these other two screws, and this will release the side plate on the gun. And I'm just wanting to take the side plate off because I want to examine the internals. I'm not necessarily going to pull any of the internals. I just want to examine them, make sure everything looks good, which the gun was functioning fine, so everything should be okay. But it's one of those things where you just want to take a look and make sure that everything is okay. There we go. Now there you can see the back plate. I'll go ahead and I'll raise this up, show you guys the internals on this. And you know, although it looks very complicated, it's not that bad to take this gun apart, but as you can see Possibly. Maybe you can see right here, got a lot of buildup of gunk right around the trigger area, and got a lot of buildup as well inside here. So, it definitely needs to be cleaned out really well. So, that'll be the next step that I take care of getting all that cleaned up, getting the other parts cleaned up, and then we'll start with uh, adding some bluing to the gun. Okay, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and put some gloves on. as I get into the actual cleaning part of this. And what I like to do when I do this is I'm just gonna start off with just plain old Q-tips and we'll start cleaning and just rubbing on this and seeing how much of this is, you know, stuff that can come out and how much is, you know, something else. As you can see what that is it, it's almost like grease and oftentimes that is something that will happen two guns where you get oil and carbon you get a lot of oil somebody keeps oiling something and oiling it or they use some other type of oil 
and it actually ends up turning to grease over years. So a lot of this just seems to be carbon buildup. Um, not getting a lot of other stuff. Just in that one spot, I had quite a, I had a, I had some buildup. But other than that, mainly just seems to be carbon buildup in the gun. Go ahead and remove this hammer block. Yeah, it's not a lot, it's not like, I mean, there's dirt there, but it's not, it's not as bad as I was going to expect, but there is a lot of carbon buildup in it, so that is something that we'll take care of, carbon and dirt buildup, uh, and for that, I'm just going to use some hops number nine, run it through here, and we'll see what happens. Got our hops right here. Just start running this over it, trying to loosen up some of this stuff. And one of the reasons for doing this is I'm just wanting to saturate the inside and let this stuff start breaking down a lot of the dirt. I know a lot of you are going, well, you, you're not really getting in behind it. And no, I'm not, and I'll explain why. I'm just wanting to saturate the inside of that and push the liquid back in behind and let it start doing its thing of breaking down some of that carbon and some of the other stuff, some of the oils and stuff. And I'll explain why here in just a second, or in just a second you'll see why I'm doing it that way. Give that a little bit to set in and soak. So after we let that get in there and soak a little bit, then what I'm going to hit it with is this basically, it's a shotgun cleaner. And uh, you use it for, like it says on here, trigger groups, choke tube threading, you know, gas ports different things like that and so it'll allow me to then spray all of this stuff and get back in behind her after this has all been loosened and broken up um, because if I just spray it in there it'll get some of it but it won't get as much if I let that soak in with the hops and then hit it with this it'll help push all of that stuff out of there and of course when I do that I like to use one of these straws I didn't show you guys that before but I like to use one of the straws so I can actually spray this in between spots where I want it. And you know what, for this one I'll actually do it on here so you guys can see it. Let me just, I got a shirt here. That. I can set this on, I'll catch all that stuff. That's all we're doing. Now I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but you can see a lot of the dirt spots that it's pulled out on this shirt. I can, I don't know if you can. But. Let's pull that out of the way. Looks pretty good. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and put this plate back on. And the reason for putting the plate back on 
is because when I do this other work or stuff on the gun, I don't want any internal parts coming loose, flying out, whatever you want to call it. I will, we will at some point take the plate back off and then we'll oil everything inside. But I don't want to put any oil on it right now because when I do the bluing and stuff, uh, the oil will prevent the bluing from being able to stick or adhere to the metal. So I just want to replace replace this and then we're going to get the outside ready for some bluing. So basically outside and get it ready for the bluing. We're going to uh, go over it. Um, we're going to clean it. So basically outside to get it ready for the bluing. We're going to get some alcohol. Sorry about bumping the camera. We're going to get some alcohol and clean all this up. We'll go around it and find any of the spots where we're having a lot of dirt build up and just clean everything. Uh, and then, like I said, we'll run alcohol all over, over, all over it to pull any other oils or anything that's in the metal up out of it. Handy dandy cotton balls and q-tips. That's all I use. But this is going to help me find where the problem spots are in the middle. If there's any rust pockets that have built up. This is going to help me find them. Because I want to find all of those spots before I start bluing anything. And that's just from alcohol. So you can tell how dirty the gun actually was. You can see along the top, the bluing is completely gone along both these sides. It's still down here in the channel, but over here it's gone on both sides. And again, that's holster wear. That's going in and out of a holster over and over and over. Along this back strap, that's simply from being handled over and over and over. So interestingly enough, if you look along here, um, there's no bluing, but as it gets right to here, I don't know if you guys can pick that up, there's like a, this diagonal line that comes across, and you start to see bluing again. So there's no bluing, comes here, and you get this slight diagonal line, and then you pick up bluing again. It's interesting because if you're holding the gun like this, right, there's still this diagonal line that's right here, right where the end of my finger is going across. But if you're a shooter and you put that other hand right there, it creates that diagonal line that you see. So all that missing bling is just simply from that. So a lot of the times when bling's missing, you can tell exactly what it's from and how it happened. Oops, kind of out of frame. Sorry about that, guys. If any of this is out of frame, I apologize. It's just trying to remember that the camera's there. All right, that's enough for the outer side of it. So let's. Okay, so all that's done. We're going to let this sit and dry out. All right, so everything's pretty much done, and we're going to get ready to start bluing it. Um. I can show you how to do the bluing, but it's kind of like it's done in all my other videos um, where I show you how to do the bluing, uh, except in this case, I'm not going to be submerging anything. I'm literally just going to be putting the, the cold blue on a cotton ball and wiping it onto the spots in the areas that need it. Um, the cylinder, you know, we'll just, we're just going to coat the whole cylinder just by wiping it down and everywhere else on the gun. That's exactly how I'm going to do it. And then I'll show you the finished product once I'm done, because i got to go ahead and take some pictures of this stuff the way it is now. And once everything's done, I'll show you guys in 
Alright, and as you can see, we finished up the cylinder. Now we don't have all of the streakiness that's in the cylinder. Um, everything's an even color. Just buffing this out a little bit more. So it's all an even shade going around. We don't have any streaks in it like we were having before. And so we will hit this with some oil right now. So we can let this set in. And I give all of the parts a very good liberal coat of oil when I do this. Okay. So there's the new part. Or not new part, but there is the blued cylinder. I give them all a liberal coat of oil. Um, I don't know. That probably shows up. Outside, we're going to test fire this 38 and we'll see how it does. Uh, this isn't for this, mainly just to see its functionality, make sure it's functioning properly, and check a little bit of its sights to make sure it's sighted in decently. All right, here we go. gun shoots extremely low so we'll start shooting a little bit higher of that target there we go still shooting really low Now we will, I'll actually shoot this last one on double action to make sure that it's working properly. Alright, so there we go. I'll show you the all five. We'll eject them. Now I, this was shooting actually very, very low. I'm gonna take you up to the target. I'm gonna show you where they're at and I'm gonna show you where I was aiming. All right, so as you guys can see, the gun shoots very, very low. Um, eventually by the time I was making these two shots I was aiming up here on the paper. Um, one of these was on a single action, the other one was a double action. Um, but you know, but the grouping's all there. So, alrighty.